What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Adventures of Hoop and Zach. I'm Hooper. And I'm Zach. And today, we're doing, we're getting busy with getting crafty. Should we, we do, I'll let that go. We'll let that one slide. Getting crafty, everybody. Getting crafty. Uh, we're going to start, as always, we're going to start light and work our way to the dark. Um, we don't have anything super dark here today, but uh, we'll get that to, uh, get to that in just a second once we get these beers poured out. Uh, we've got all our beers poured out. Again, like usual, one through four, same thing with these cans. Uh, the first uh, beer that we've got is uh, called Lizard People uh, by Drecker Brewing Company. It's an Imperial Double New England IPA. Uh, this, is, this particular can is $7.00. It's 8.5 ABV, comes in a 16 ounce can. Um, well, all that to say, so first of all, so first off, judging by the can, little bummed by that it's in a can, but I get it. I get I get the trying to keep the light out of it, trying to keep, you know, zero air touching it. Yeah, the can helps protect the beer. <clears throat> and love, love, love the artwork on these. I really do. Okay, so this is here's the difference between someone who's not had a lot of IPAs and someone who has. Again, I still don't like IPA, but I can pick up the different smells now. That's the biggest difference. I can smell the floral. Again, this has been sitting in the fridge for <clears throat> seven, eight months. Yeah. Or no, six months, something like that. So, okay. Cheers. America. Cheers. Oh, this isn't bad. Okay, so first of all, I'm picking up the floral note, the floral, the citrus. I know where they were going with this. I have tasted some IPAs, and this is by far one of the better ones. Now, with that said, I can still taste the hops. Oh, yeah, the hops are definitely present, which I'm not a big fan of hops. The one I think about using Tavor, which is, again, where I've got all this beer from, almost every beer I've ever ordered from there, it's been it's been decent for the most part. There's been a couple in there that have been like, okay, nope, not drinking this. Um, but, again, it's been sitting in the fridge for a little bit, so i got to figure out. Now, I'm going to write my score on here. I think I know I'm going to give it. This second one that we have here, um, this is the one that he wanted to do. Um, again, we have a list of beers that we can choose from. This is one of the ones that he really wanted, wanted uh, yeah. to drink. He was excited about. <clears throat> I have, I have never tried until a couple of uh, like a month ago, sour beers. Until I introduced you to them. Yeah, like yeah, until we did it on this channel. Now. That night, I literally fell in love with it. I spent on I finished that beer by myself last that night, and it was great. I loved that beer. So if this is anything like that. I'm excited. So this second <clears throat> one is called Berliner's Field with watermelon. It's by Dionysus Brewing Company. It's a sour Berliner Weiss. So that means it's a wheat sour beer. Um, it's uh, this is a ten dollar beer. It's 4.8% alcohol. So, first of all, bottle, love the bottle. Oh, Artwork, wow. it's not crazy cool, but I it's like the artwork. It's, it's simple. Yeah, it's simple. It's elegant. It's nice. And obviously, it's got the pink and the green, like you would see in a watermelon. It smells like watermelon. Yeah, that's a very fruity watermelon smell. So, all right. Cheers. Ooh. Oh, did you drink it already? Yeah. That initial hit. It's a different kind of sour, though. It hurt my tongue a little bit. Woo! That's pretty good. Mm, gets you the little pucker in the back. That watermelon is actually much more subtle than I was expecting it to be, but it's... it's Again, it's, it's like there. it's like a champ. It's almost like a champagne, or drinking something super super light, and they just 
it's hard to really this is it's different. This is very different. This is very a much like it's original. I would call this a summertime beer all day long. You know what I mean? It's light, it, it's vibrant, it it it's easy on the tongue, it's easy on the stomach. I can't taste the hops at all. You don't you don't feel you you don't feel I mean, there's definitely a there's still definitely you don't a get that your power to you this. Yeah, you don't but get that. You don't get that chest pressure. I can drink this pretty easily. Yeah, I mean, it, it's super smooth. That's a definitely that's definitely a good beer. This next one, we're going to kind of mellow it down. Um, going to a lager. It's called Aparador Suave. It's by a really good brewing company called Fred Mountain Brewing. Um, this particular one is a American light lager. Uh, it's Three dollars and fifty cents for this sixteen ounce can, so that's that's pretty reasonably priced. Yeah, um, five point four percent alcohol, and uh, yeah. So this was. Well, I'll tell you what. By present presentation wise, artwork on the can, yeah, kind of bummed it's in the can, like always. I get it though. Artwork. Love the artwork on this can. It looks a little hippie. It looks a little beach stone. Like if you're gonna be at the beach, it. it it looks cool. This kind of looks like a Corona a little bit. I mean, and it's got that nice bubbling, like mm. a champagne going on. Slightly bubbled. Slightly slightly bubbled champagne-ness going on. You ready? Cheers. That tastes like a Corona, but just better. Maybe like, oh, that's like a... That's right there. What that is, that's a mix between Corona Dos Equis and Lamb Shark. I'm picking up a little bit skunkiness in it on some of the back notes. I don't know. Maybe. That could just be because it was, we've had, we've had. It's so like, but you know what? All three of those beers have kind of that, like, that wannabe. No, not, I wouldn't call it wannabe, but they have that little skunky note of, like, Heineken. A little bit, but not like Heineken. It's, a, it's just a little bit of a hop that you're getting. Yeah. But the difference is with this, the real big difference, if you think about Heineken or Corona, um, Dan Shark, Dos Equis. they're all in clear bottles or green bottles, which really let sunlight in, which isn't good for a beer. It really isn't. That's why when that's why a lot of these guys eat. advertise beer, they say drink it cold, drink, you know, ice yeah. cold in the, you know, and drink it straight, like really quick, because otherwise as it starts to warm up, it starts to taste bad. That, um, that's why, like, I just watched the, a whole documentary yeah. on on breweries, like, and one of the things was that they were saying was, is that the reason why they're going to cans is because it's really protecting the beer from the sunlight yeah. and oxygen. And also, it gets cost efficient. And so, cost efficient. So, those yeah, are the three main it, reasons why they're going to cans. Yeah, it protects the beer like crazy. So, same thing mm -hmm. with the brown bottles. A lot of guys don't want to invest in the brown bottles because it's more expensive. Yeah. Well, that was, that was pretty decent. Um... Yeah, that that's a beach beer right there. That's that's I could use some lime, yeah. a little bit of salt. That's what that beer is. Um, okay, I know where they were going with that, and I think I'm gonna give it. So while he is right now, he's writing real quick. I'm gonna go in the final beer that we got here. Um, Barrel aged Frog's Hollow Double Pumpkin Ale. So this will be our first kind of beer we've had like this by Hop and Frog Brewery, which you've seen before. They did one of our Christmas beers. Uh, this is a pumpkin yam beer. Uh, it's a fourteen dollar fourteen dollar bottle, eight point four percent alcohol. Um, has a nice golden kind of pumpkiny orangey color to yeah. it. Yeah, which looks cool. Oh, it's First of all, bottle. Love the bottle. Love the size of that bottle. That's a big bottle. Uh, artwork. It's great. I like I like the little frog thing. And they're simplistic. They have a logo. They have a brand. They're sticking to it, and it works really well. It definitely oh, has spiced. Yeah, yeah. You could smell the spice. You can smell that like pumpkin pie. Yeah, very seasonal. Yeah, that, that's definitely like a seasonal beer right there. Hey. All right, man. Huh. Cheers. Merry late Christmas. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> oh wow. Woo! Whoa, that had a bit of a spice to it. Has significant spice to it. You definitely pick up that that pumpkin. Yeah. Right and off the back, it, pumpkin spice, and then it floats down pretty smooth. There's a, you know what? I'm tasting the booziness, almost like a bourbon. Not a bourbon, like, mm. a, like a whiskey, like a whiskey. 
Yam. Is there's yam, yam beer? There's yam in it? Yam? Yep, Asian whiskey barrel. So that's what it is. That's what I'm picking up on. Pumpkin, you get that spice, spice. but then it like, has that smooth, like how, like when you taste a really good liquor. There's a whiskey finish. Yeah, and, and that with, and it's just smooth. And it, you're not getting that like, E that burns, but you, when you get one of those really good, a little bit better than your average whiskey. But you can, you can, you can taste it. You're getting the whiskey coming down yeah. without, obviously without the burn. Yeah. It's, it's very good. It's, um, yeah. I was surprised by that one. That one really surprised me. My first, it's my first pumpkin yam beer too, so. And I can always say, you know, I probably wouldn't buy this unless if we're, unless if it's like, it's, it's in the season. You know what I mean? If it's in the season no. and I'm feeling the spirit, obviously I'm definitely going to lean to something like beer. this as kind of like a, like a fun thing to pass around amongst friends. Yeah. Not like old Scrooge. Old Scrooge, oh man, I would drink that every day. Yeah. If you hand that bottle with me, I drink it any time. Or the Annabelle, what's it called? The, the one with the church on it? Oh, uh, Lost Abbey. Lost Abbey? No, the Abbey. Yeah, yeah that, that one good. was so good. And it's not going to be on there. And some of those coffee, the that text, that, te the pecan. Texas pecan. Texas pecan stuff. That one, I could drink that all day. Yeah, those were those were good, solid beers. Yeah. Oh, I really like the sour beer the most out of these. Which one was your favorite? I, I kind of like this. I like this last one. Yeah. Uh, this one and, and the Berliner. This one? The Sour. The oh, the sour, sour, yeah. Those were good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, the, the, the lager was good, but, it's, you know. It was, obviously, it was, they're all good, but for you, but for your own, like, and now they're being biased. Yeah. Those two are going to be the two. Because the lager is, I mean, it's a basic lager. I mean, it's an yeah. American light lager. There's not much you can do to it. Yeah. But it's good for what it is. It's much better than. Your stat, you know, then Corona and all those guys, you know. What are your scores? Are we wanting to rate them with Untapped? Yeah, let's go ahead and rate it with Untapped. Okay, give us a second. We'll be right back. We gotta get the score from Untapped, and then we'll get back. And we're gonna get a little busy drinking. <laughs> it's like ten o'clock in the morning. The first beer we had was the Lizard People. Drecker Brewing Company, Imperial Double New England IPA, um, based out of Fargo, North Dakota. Um, I gave so what'd you give it? I gave it a four. I gave it a three seven five. Untapped currently has it rated at a four point zero nine. Okay, I was <laughs> you were right there. Yeah. So the next one. Berliner's Field with Watermelon, Sour Berliner Wise, 4.8, 5 IBU, uh, out of Bakersfield, California. I gave it a 3.75. I gave it a 4. They had rated it a 4.12. Woo! I was right on it. Operador Suave. This is the Fremont Brewing Lager American Light. Um... Basically out of Seattle, Washington. Untapped gave it a 3.74. I gave it a 4. I gave it a 3.75. Oh, uh, that was a snap. Yeah, I was running the money. Oh, I didn't even rate this last year. Oh, you better rate it quick. I'm going to give it a 3.75. Yeah, my tongue is like burnt. It is. Yeah, there's a, we did a lot of, a lot of videos today. Yeah. Barrel Age Frog Saw Double Pumpkin Ale, four, uh, 8.4 ABV, uh, 7 IBU, out of Akron, Ohio. It's a th untapped, give it a 3.89. Well, I gave it a 3.75. I gave it a 4. So, I mean, we were pretty much right there on the same, but we both pretty much gave it the same rating. 3.75, 4. So, I mean, again, one thing that Tavor has always been good at, they both provided pretty good high quality beer yeah um yes and you've gotten much better because you gave the ipa a pretty decent rating yeah it, it's because yeah like i'm trying not to be biased on it on the rating because i mean in all reality like if i would give it what i what I, what my personal preference by judging by my personal preference that would be a zero yeah. but that's because i don't like ipa now from judging what the beer is supposed to be that's definitely one of the better ipas that i've tried yeah, it's, it's pretty good. So, 
Anyways, guys, I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell. Um, let us know if there's anything else you want us to see. What you want to see? See, drink. You know, if you want us to, you know, just talk to us. We'll answer back. And uh, yeah. if you want us to try, you know, other stuff besides beer too, eventually we'll go live at some point. But yeah, you know, once there's more of y'all, let us know.